Mike Habib. Seamus, let's see this armor. Is meeting with physicist Seamus Blackley to test a replica that estimates Boriello Pelta's armor. So this is the rear haunch of the notosaur that we talked about. We laid down some ribs, some silicon connective tissue. Um, then on top of it, we developed a polymer that we cast into these scales that have the right level of hardness and the right mechanical properties to match what we think was actually on the animal. Oh, that's perfect. And the, the bone that you included? It's cast so that it has the same fracture characteristics as bone. But you didn't just build the perfect armor, though. I know you've also built the perfect predator. When you see the predator, you might be a little bit worried for, for Notosaur. <laughs> All right, Mike, let me introduce you to our Acrocanthosaurus. This is Kathy. Oh, what a beast. Hello, Kathy. Mike, this is as near as we can produce to a mechanically accurate, force accurate Acrocanthosaurus head. She has 48 teeth made out of a special porcelain that we slip cast and then fired so that we have the same strength and fragility, we think, as the teeth of this animal. And gosh, it's terrifying. It really is. I'm really curious to see how Boreal Peltas armor is going to hold up under a bite from Acrocanthosaurus. Go look at the angle, Mike. Do you like that relative to the mouth? Yeah. They set up to simulate a bite on Boreello Pelta's haunch. Bite force on Acrocanthosaurus was thousands of pounds per square inch. But when you look at what it's up against, this is a very tough armor. This is going to be highly destructive, I think, one way or the other. All right. OK, can you hold it there? Yeah. Watson? We're ready. All right, we're go. Firing on. Homing. Three, two, one, fire. <laughs> Notice or did really well. Well, it lost osteoderms, broke those off. That's a sustainable loss. The keratin, it can regrow. Are we bleeding at this point? I mean, there'd be, yeah, be some bleeding. Let's give it another bite, see what happens if she took a second bite. All right. All right. Watson. Three, two, one, fire. Oh. OK. That's now just a fountain of blood. You can see the ribs. There are the ribs. Yep. This is the connective material on the ribs. That's a rib right there, right? And it's, oh my god, Michael. The rib is shattered. Shattered. Oh, it sure is. Look at that. So this is a slow motion video of the second bite. That's just oh brutal. Oh, my god. Oh, that's just awful. I'm a physicist, not a physician, but that looked like a tremendous amount of organ damage right there. Yeah. I'm very impressed with both our critters, to be honest. Boreal Pelta held up a little better than, than I might have expected. But it really also, I think, tells us that if Boreal Pelta was attacked by an acrocanthosaur, you would see evidence of that. That's really fun to watch, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Based on our bite tests, it's highly unlikely that a Boreal pelta would sustain a major bite from a big predator and not show any signs. 